So this class is about how to use the RX 16 n boards. Um, as soon as you get the board, um, if you turn uh, to the back side of it, it says quick start guide inside. Um, but when you look at it, you don't really know where it is. It's actually in between uh, this paper that is inside this manual. So if you open this, you'll find the quick start guide. You'll also find a CD that has all the drivers and everything that you need uh, to run this, uh, to work with the RX-CCP and boards. Uh, if you go through the install guide, it says that you can go to, to their website to download the uh, drivers and things like that. I'd recommend that you do that uh, instead of using the CD because I tried doing it with the CD and with the uh, install file that was on their website and I realized that it was better to use. Uh, it was more complete, uh, the zip file that they have on their website. So download that zip file, install it on your computers. Uh, you will need to install it on your laptops. Uh, I don't think Mosaic has the, no. the recent uh, updates. So you will have to use your uh, laptops or PCs uh, to work with uh, RxCCT and boards. We are looking at installing it in our room, which is 2130, 2132 for the uh, lab room that we'll use for the semester. I've installed it on a few computers, and I'm going to finish installing on all the computers. Okay. Um, all right, follow this quick start menu, and uh, you should be able to uh, install Q as well as all the supporting softwares that you need to uh, run the 63 n port. Uh, there are a few things that you might need licenses for. Some of them are free, some of them require you to pay, I think, an annual fee. I leave it up to you to decide if you need to uh, get the, the ones that require you to pay something. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's, uh, some of them are not necessary supporting files, so if you want, you can have them. If you don't want, it works without it too. But you definitely need the Q uh, uh, editor, at least the Q editor, to work on uh, the 63N board. Follow these steps. There's one change that I recommend uh, uh, based on what the manual says. It says that uh, you have to download a specific, uh, like, you know, run a specific demo code. Don't work with that particular demo code because there are some supporting files that is not included in this package. Instead, uh, if you go through the manual that, I've, uh, that Dr. Conrad and I have designed for your first lab, it specifically says to go to a different file and use that particular example code and then run that particular code. So use that one instead of the one that is uh, provided, uh, that they're asking you to uh, use in the quick start uh, guide. Uh, with that being said, if everything goes well, you will be able to install Q. Uh, connect your board to your computer only after you finish installing uh, the entire package. Do not connect the board before because it's going to start searching for drivers, it's not going to find the drivers and it, it goes into some uh, weird state because of that. So it's finish the entire installation and only then connect the board. Okay? Do not connect the board anywhere in between the whole installation process. It's going to take a few minutes to finish the installation. Once you've installed it, there should be a, a, a shortcut that should have been created on your uh, desktop, which is the Q. Uh, icon. As soon as you click on the, the on the icon, by the way, before I do that, in your start menu you'll see
you'll see this uh, specific folder that has been created called Renaissance. And if you go in Renaissance and High Performance Embedded Workshop, you'll see here and there. You can go from here or you can use the shortcut. All the supporting documents that Dr. Conrad has put on his website um, are also available in, in this particular folder, which says YRDKRX63N. That's the name of the board. It has all these supporting files that you might need during your uh, you know, to use the RX63N board. So feel free to explore these uh, files to see what is useful uh, to you for a particular project. Uh, I say that the user manual, the schematics, and the hardware manual, these were the most useful files that I found. Uh, they have a ton of information on them, so these should be more than enough. The others are also good, but these three are primarily what you'll be using. All right, coming back to Q. Uh, as soon as you uh, click on Q, it gives you this particular welcome window, and it says you can create a new project, you can open an existing project, or uh, browse for another project or workspace. Choose the browse for another project workspace. Okay. Takes you to this. Go to your C drive. By the way, this entire path is provided in the manual uh, that you'll get for your second assignment. So you don't have to take down this entire path. But go to uh, micro software, file modes, as you. Uh, the, the quick start menu says that you should use the TCP IP uh, uh, demo code that they have, but I found that there are some issues with the supporting files. So go to the uh, micro cos 3 and choose the u cos 3 uh, workspace. And as soon as you open this, that particular workspace gets loaded. Your main.c file is actually the app.c file. In the app.c file, you have your main code, and so that's the first file that I want everybody to take a look at. You look at app.c, it has all these things that have already been defined, and you pretty much like, I've made some changes, but you'll have a properly written code that you don't really have to change at all. But just to get a practice of how to work with Q, uh, what you should do is, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to guide you through it. Uh, go to build. Go to build all. What you're trying to do is, first you have your uh, main code and all the supporting files. You want to build the process first before you uh, download it onto your uh, RxCC3 import. So you go to build all, or you can use the icon over here which says build all two. Either of those two will build the entire process. I'm not going to do that because my computer is quite slow, so it takes a long time. Uh, but when you do that, it's going to go through a few processes. If there are no errors, it basically builds the entire project. If there are errors, it points it out. You can use these icons over here, uh, these two icons, to browse you with the errors and see what the exact errors were on which line, in which file, it, it specifies perfectly. Warnings, it might have a few warnings, but usually warnings don't cause the system to fail. But it's always good to remove the warnings too. Uh, there are specific ways uh, of coding. Like if you have just an if statement without an else, it might give you a warning. Uh, things like that, uh, uh, you, you can remove them very easily. You don't really have to remove them every single time, but it's recommended that you remove them. All right. Uh, once you've done that, you go to, uh, and the project is built successfully, go to debug. First, you connect to the board. When you say connect, uh, there are two different versions that uh, it allows you to do. You have the default session and you have the J-Link. We are using the J-Link on the, bo on the board, so choose the J-Link option. Connect. 
the first time you do it, it's probably going to give you a few different things saying that it needs to be connected, it needs to download a few things. Uh, since I've already done this a few number of times, it's not giving me those uh, windows. But make sure that this is 63 MB. Again, all this is in the manual, so you don't really have to uh, like, you know, take down loads right now. But make sure that this is 63 MB. Uh, it's in the debugging mode. Just hit OK. It's going to connect the board uh, to your computer. Make sure that the frequency is 12. 1.2 megahertz. Uh, yeah, 12, 12 megahertz, sorry. Hit OK. And now your board is connected uh, to the system. Then go to debug and download modules. All download modules. It's good. It should not give you that window, but it did give you anyways. All right. Once you've downloaded it, just hit the go button. Now we are going to move over to talk All right. In this particular project, uh, that is the second assignment, what you're expected to do is simulate how a train works. So you have a train which is nothing else but four LEDs that are lit. Uh, and these four LEDs are going around a track, which is circular in nature. Uh, over there, if you see the four LEDs, the two green and the two red LEDs, those represent the train. And they have to go around on the track. And you're controlling the motion of this train by using three switches, switch one, two, and three. Initially, as soon as the code starts, the train should be in the stop mode. Notice that I have my name uh, uh, on the LCD screen. Uh, I have the train demo on the second line. Mode colon stop on the third line. So you have to make sure that that is displayed on the LCD screen, first of all. And based on the motion of the train, if it's moving forward or backwards, you're going to change the, the mode. So, for instance, over here, you see that uh, the train is in the stop. As soon as you start, the train is in the stop mode, and so it says stop over here. But anyways. Yeah, thanks. Alright. When you hit the switch one button, there are these three switches over here switch one, switch two, and switch three. When you hit the switch one button, the train should start moving around on the LCD or on the LED. At any given point of time, you have four LEDs that are turning on. And if you notice, the, the mode says F, W, D, but you have to write forward in place of it. But, and those are the changes that should happen when you hit switch one. When you hit switch two, the train should stop. Wherever it is, it should stop at that point. When you hit switch three, it should start moving in the opposite direction. These are the requirements of the project that, uh, the second project that you're working on. Um, you can play around with it. Did we slow it down? Yes, okay. you can slow it down. There is, uh, uh, do you want me to demo that too? Nah. So there is a function, uh, I have had to call a function which uh, includes delays into it, uh, because if you just run it at 12 megahertz, it's going to go so fast that you just won't be able to see anything. So I had to delay after every LED function. I had to include a delay so that the system slows down. Or after the LED, the change of the LEDs slows down. Uh, this LED delay can be increased or reduced based on whatever your requirements is. And uh, all these files are available to you. I've included as many hints as I thought was reasonable so that everybody can work on, on this project successfully. Um, but basically, you have to get this done for your second assignment. 
right? It's a very simple code. You don't have to change a lot of the code. You can use the demo code that you were using uh, for your previous, uh, like you know, as soon as you started the using the board, you can use the same code. Just make a few changes here and there, and it should start working exactly like this. All right. I've included as many hints as I think was reasonable in the, in the, uh, in the manual. Any questions? Yes? Uh, can we install it in Mac? I think so. I haven't, I haven't looked into it. You can install it on Mac if it runs Windows. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. I mean, we got lots of uh, when Macs running Windows here. Um, there is not a version of Hue that runs on a Mac. I have another question. Yes. Does it have issue with Windows 8? Windows 8. I don't know. I, don't I have not heard of any. Okay. If anybody has heard of any, please post it on the forum. It's a very straightforward follow step one, two, three, and, and you pretty much have to read the, uh, the user guide and you should be able to get this done very successfully. All right?